And we're live. Happy hump day, fam. Last day of the month. Not quite the panic we usually see. Last day of the month. I am still oot in a boot. Be returning home in just a couple days. Look forward to that. One of the things about San Diego, it is the most beautiful place in the world. I've been everywhere. It's the one place I always, always, always look forward to coming home to. Come on, microphone. What are you doing right now? All right. A uh, bunch of stuff today we're going to talk about. Uh, a lot of things going on. We're live everywhere. Facebook, LinkedIn. We're live on LinkedIn, for goodness sakes. YouTube, uh, Twitter. <laughs> we don't have Instagram on here yet, but maybe one of these days. Uh, so drop comments. Say what's up. Say hi. We're going to run through a few things here today. We're going to talk about mortgage rates. We're going to talk about inventory. We're going to talk about the real estate market. We're going to talk about the Fed, their next steps. I'm going to show you the stock market. Got to be honest, I nailed that one. Wish I had monetized my prediction a little bit better than I have, but that always seems to be the case. It's one thing to know or think you know what direction the market is going to head. It's another thing to also then be able to capitalize on it. It's much easier to sit here and just predict the direction of things. It's a whole nother thing to try to actually make money doing it. So we're going to start with mortgage rates. This is kind of what is the really big deal right now is potential breach of current support. Rates got a little worse today. Nobody wants to hear this. I know it, um, but it is what it is. 39 basis points lost, gonzo, and not a good chart formation or candle formation. Not good. So we've got these support wicks down here, right, which have given us some nice support levels. This is like a really good support shelf right here you know, for bonds. And mind you, we want to see bonds going up right here. This is mortgage bonds, um, as that would mean lower rates. When bonds go down like this, that means higher rates. Not ideal. That said, we're still in, you know, like the high fours, FHA, VA, maybe 5% um, today uh, at the end of the day, but still pretty good there. And conventionals are sneaking into the high fives, low sixes again. So, but we remember Fannie Mae said next year, four and a half percent, the average rate, that's a full point below where we are now. But what happens between now and then? People aren't going to wait a year just for that lower rate necessarily. So the bad thing about this candle is you see the wicks on the top, you know, we closed at the lows. It just looks like it wants to breach the support level and come back down here and retest this. And if it does, that's 98 we're talking about. We're at 99.3 right now, right? 99.3. That's a 130 basis point drop, and there's nothing there. There's no support. There's nothing there. It's a free fall. That could potentially be tomorrow. So I'm going to highly recommend getting locked in as soon as possible. This is not a great situation at the moment in the short term. However, it could cause a really, really nice and powerful double bottom setup. That's really the best case scenario. That's what we're hoping for here. Um, you know, if we get the double bottom, then let's see my head in the way. No, it's good. Okay. Um, so. If we get the double bottom, that'd be great. That could cause that could be the rally starter to get us back up here to this 102 range. We'll see. I don't want to go through that pain with you. I don't want to experience that pain, but we very well may see it. Oh, there's something else too. So we're gonna look at stats. So that's just where we're at. Okay, we're in a downtrend. It's not pretty. It sucks, um, but it is what it is. You know, we we are still optimistic that rates will go lower in the near future. Just don't know when or how much. Um, and I do recommend locking right now as soon as you get the opportunity to. So we're going to look at stats over here. I want to share something with you, though. This is really interesting to me. So you know I follow Redfin. I get all the emails from Redfin. I've, I've heart a lot of properties on Redfin so that they will tell me, they will just email me market data, real-time market data about those properties when they're going, when they're having open houses, when there's a price reduction, when they go into contract, when they sell, what it actually sells for. So we have tons of market data just coming to me. I don't have to really see. I go and I heart properties and then I, it just comes. It's beautiful. Um, this was a new thing. I've not seen this email from them before. So it's a new thing. 10 most popular homes in San Diego. So this was great about Redfin being a broker and also having a website where they have their own information. They're going to tell you, hey, these are the properties that are getting the most views through our website. And that's pretty cool information. We're going to look at these 10 properties and I want to look at these with you because it, it does tell you something about the market. And then after we look at that, then we're going to look at the market data for San Diego right now. And then we'll look at, you know, some interesting stuff the Fed is talking about here. Um, and then I'll show you 
what might be next for the stock market. Okay, sound fair? And if you are on here right now, drop a comment, say what's up. That's right, Michael, we live. Say what's up, drop a comment, ask a question. I'm here to help. You guys know what I do. I do home loans, help people finance the American dream in America's finest city. And uh, we don't charge any fees. We are a wholesale organization. We're brokers, so we have incredible interest rates. Let us give you a quote if you are in the market to buy or refi. And I'll put up my information a little bit later. All right. So first one here, 3020 Seville. Uh, this is under a million bucks. Look, it's 92110. Okay. So that's over in like Point Loma area. Um, actually, where is this on the map? Yeah, like Point Loma area-ish. Under a million bucks, three bed, two bath. And that is a, a detached home for right at a million. That looks like a pretty smoking deal to me. But what's really interesting about these top 10 properties is just look at price point and location. Like that's one thing. And you can see on the map on the left where the cluster is. You got like three over in Poway. You've got four over in Carmel Valley, Del Mar. You've got uh, one down here in, let's see. What, let's see. One is in Claremont, I think. One is in, uh, this one is in Point Loma. And then one is in kind of like 92114 down there, number eight, kind of off. That's the one off. You'll you'll see why. What's really powerful about this is we can sit here and we can guess like what people are looking at, what people want, what the most popular homes are going to be. But the market will speak to you if you have access to the data. And we do have access to this data, which is going to speak to us today. It's going to tell us something. I was surprised today because I have a VA buyer who's writing a million dollar writing an offer on a million dollar property in Lakeside and there's multiple offers. What? What? Where's your market crash, guys? It's not happening. Right now, we have a situation in this market where it's gotten better for buyers because buyers have walked away. Buyers walking away, it's okay. You can walk away from the market. If you're a buyer and you don't want to play in this sandbox, that's okay. You just have to be honest with yourself. What kind of buyer are you? Are you the kind of buyer who wants to only buy and only feels comfortable buying when everyone else is buying? Are you the kind of buyer who has to be in a situation where lots of people are buying and that makes you feel okay? Because if you are, that's fine. But just know you're going to be buying probably when rates are lower, prices are higher, more of a seller's market. You need to you know, remove contingencies, appraisal gap, all that stuff we've been doing the last two years. That's the market that you are more comfortable buying in. Nothing wrong with it. It's not the best time to buy though. But if that makes you feel comfortable, then okay. You're that kind of buyer. Know that. Be prepared for that. Say, hey, listen, be honest with yourself. This is the kind of buyer I am. I need to do it when everyone else is doing it. I'm okay with that. I understand that. I've accepted myself for being that way. And so be, I need to be prepared for that. So when the time comes that you're ready to buy because everyone else is buying, you can't be like, oh, but I want to offer under list like people are able to do right now. I want closing costs. You're not going to get it. So be prepared for with the reality of the market you're comfortable buying in. Okay. It's just a PSA. If you're the per type of buyer like me who wants to buy when no one else wants to, when buyers scatter and sellers get desperate and there's opportunity to get things below list, there's opportunity to get things below. Bro. I just I have one in escrow right now in escrow for 950 with 10,000 closing costs. Okay. It's a VA buyer. Praise for a million. That's the market I want to buy in. And I understand most people. It's counterintuitive. Oh, but it seems like it's not a good time to buy. But that's when it actually is. When it seems like it isn't. It's hard. It's hard to understand it. I get it. All right. So this first one here, 92110. Uh, I'll put this link in there if you guys want to check these properties out. You can click on these individually. It takes you right to the Redfin listing. Look at all the photos. This is a pretty slick deal. I'd be surprised if this one doesn't. Look, this has been viewed 6,200 times. Holy smokes. This one's going to go over list team, okay? And probably most of these will, but that just shows you, okay, million bucks, well-priced. See, the, the listing agent on this one did their seller right. Um, and they whether they convinced their seller to do this or not, I don't know. Maybe it was the seller's idea. Woody Henderson. Of course it's Woody. Woody's a genius. Woody, well done. You're going to get your seller's top dollar because look at how many eyeballs you got on it. This should be a good example to show your potential sellers, if you're a realtor, going to a listing appointment, hey, this is how you get a lot of eyeballs. Look, price it right, right under a million, mm, sweet spot. Okay. <coughs> Media Trice Lane. Okay, 92129. So where is this one? This one is 
right. It's like 4S area. Number nine is over there too. 1.7 million. But look at that photo. I mean, that's get just some eyeballs right there. That's why you always want to start your listing off. The number one photo should be the best one. Whatever it is. Doesn't need to be the curb appeal. You know, if you have a crazy kitchen, put that there. If it's a crazy view with a pool like that, put that there. But think about that. Most one of the most viewed homes here has been on the market for how long? Price was dropped. Panel reviews, top ocean summit, rare opportunity. Listed by Redfin? Looks like it might be listed by Redfin. Rachel Gardner's listing. Um, where's time on market? 56 days. So look at this one has a price drop. Been on the market 56 days, but getting a ton of eyeballs. What does that tell us? What can we learn from? Yeah, it is listed by Redfin. Rachel Gardner, she's great. Love Rachel. She goes to my church. Or we go to the same church. I should say I go to her church. She went there first. <laughs> um, so what does that tell us? That tells us that there's a lot of people looking, okay? There's more a lot of people looking who maybe aren't ready to write offers yet, but a lot of people are looking. Also, really beautiful properties like this are going to get a lot of eyeballs. Maybe at 1.7 is not the right price for this thing, but someone's going to buy this place. The, the buyers on the sidelines is one of the reasons why I believe a crash is almost impossible. There's so many buyers on the sidelines, and this is a clue to that, showing us there's a ton of people looking at this. People aren't writing offers. Why they think, oh, well, 1.7, maybe it'll come down. Or, you know, when it gets 1.6, or when we can find one like this for 1.5, then we'll pull the trigger. People are waiting in the wings. That is what you call support. Those are our soldiers. They are support for this market. Prices come in a little bit more. Something gets a little bit closer to where they want it, and then boom, they will become buyers. So I like seeing things like that, even though a lot of people look at it and go, oh, well, it's been on the market for a long time. That's bad. No, the fact that it's getting a lot of views and it has been on the market for almost two months. And at that price point, it's not too weird, right? Like two months is not a long time to be on the market for 1.7 million bucks. But we've become accustomed to things moving so quickly that it seems like it is. Now, this is one in Carmel Valley here. The concentration, the thing that I noticed about the map here is that you have that concentration like Poway 4S here, Carmel Valley, Del Mar, four out of the top 10. And that's not too surprising because Carmel Valley is such a sick spot. But if you look at this here, uh, let's see how long this one's on the market. Uh, eight days for this one. Eight days. Redfin estimate pretty much right at the last the, the list price. Six bedroom home, two milli in Carmel Valley. That is one of the most viewed homes, top 10 viewed homes in San Diego. Wow. Wow. Carmel Valley. Carmel Valley team, 2 million top 10 viewed home. I'm flabbergasted, but just shows you the power. That one's only been on eight days. Shows you the power of Carmel Valley. Now this, I expected to see more when I, I, I should have written it down with my expectations. Were thinking, what are the top 10 homes? Gonna be? I assume they were going to be like the cheapest homes. They are not. It is as much about location as it is price. Here's one that's price oriented. So this is Rancho Bernardo. 92128. This one actually went pending. Um, and it's a, a three bed, two bath condo for under 600. And that was getting a ton of views. This one was on the market for three days. Gonzo. See you later. And this was also listed by Redfin. Now, part of the reason these might be getting a lot of users is because Redfin um, sort of pumps their own listings up on these deals. Okay. This is a home in Del Mar right here. A three bed, two bath detached. I know exactly where this home is. 1,500 square feet, 1.5 milli. 1.5 millions. This one is not listed by Redfin. This is Randy Turner and Melissa James listing Ranch and Coast Real Estate. Six days on the market. 1.5 million. Is that a pool? Is that an actual pool? It's kind of hard to tell. Okay, here's a better look. Yeah, kind of a pool. A semi pool, if you will. <laughs> uh, but hey, a pool nonetheless. And it is in Del Mar. Looks like solar there as well. You got the hot tub. Your pool is a little bit bigger than your hot tub, but it's a pool. It's not not a pool. <laughs> so, but that's also flabbergasted. 1.5 million in Del Mar, detached home, 1,500 square feet. And that's getting crazy views. And it's not because it's a Redfin listing. So listen to what the market is telling you. People are looking at these expensive homes in the areas that 
they want. And the areas that are the top areas, remember I told you this is going to become a regional thing again. The good areas are still going to thrive. There's still going to be a lot of people who want to be in these places. There's tons of buyers on the sidelines still. Tons and tons and tons of buyers on the sidelines. I can't even, I was trying to actually come up with a number. I believe it's probably close to 100, maybe more. People who are pre-approved, very well qualified, that were just in my pipeline alone. One loan officer who did not buy and said, we're going to rent or we're going to wait out a year. And that was earlier this year. We're going to wait a year. Those people will come back around. Into this year, beginning of next year, will be where they're getting two, three months out from their lease being up. If Fannie Mae is right and rates are lower, which I expect them to be as well, I think the frenzy could begin again as early as next year. I mean, we could be less than six months left in what is a buyer's market by all intents and purposes that we're used to in this in this marketplace. We don't have necessarily a lot of time left for this, I don't think. I could be wrong, but a lot of things are pointing to that. And this is just one of them. That one's been on the market six days, six days. Okay, Tory View Court. This one, is, so Tory View Court, 92130, it's like South Carmel Valley, but the prices there are pretty much Carmel Valley prices, straight up. This one has a sick pool. The views are ridiculous. Um, the houses are right next to each other, and that's a, almost a $2 million house. And this is a top viewed home, viewed 3,500 times. Not, this is not a Redfin listing. John Pabst has this one, Pabst and Associates, been on the market five days. Not only is it 2 million, but has 200 month HOA. Guys, this is one of the top 10 viewed properties in San Diego. Bananas. I was just, I was blown away by this, why so I wanted to share it. Okay, Tenderborn. This is also 9213. 130. This is more Carmel Valley proper. This one's not going to have that pool, but it's 1.9 milli and it is, you know, north of the 56. There's a like, cutoff there, kind of where Carmel Valley Road becomes the 56 is north, north of that, not by a ton, but in Carmel Valley proper, 1.9 million. This one, does it give us the views on this one? This one is also not a Redfin listing. Okay, viewed 2,900 times. On the market, five days, five days. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to go back through. I've been, I forgot to do this. I'm going to heart every single one of these. I forgot to do that. I meant to do that um, because I want to get the numbers. Okay, this is what I thought it would be. So when I had my expectations of what are the top 10 properties in San Diego that have the top 10 viewed properties in San Diego, what are they going to be? I expected them all to be this, what this one is. This one here, Miguel Vista Place. 92114. It's a four bedroom, two bath, 1600 square feet, detached home. Okay. Nothing pretty about it, but 550 price point. I remember a day when you could, and this is just a couple of years ago, where you could find all kinds of homes like this under 600,000, detached, four bed, three bed, some of them with a pool, even. We had tons of those just a few years ago. Now we don't. Clearly, people are looking for that. A lot of people looked at this house, even though it's not in a great location necessarily. Um, 3,300 views on this thing in three days. That's huge, huge. It's in Encanto it is what it is. Okay. But it's a detached home for 550. So, um, that's not too shabby. I'm going to, we're going to see uh, the reason I'm favoriting these properties is because I want emails. I want to know what they close for. I want to know how much below list or above list they close for. I'm going to know when they go in contract. I want to know how long it takes. Here's another one, 92129. So this is the other one in the 92129. This one is good, 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 gorgeous and has a beautiful pool. Um, this listing is Ever Eternity is her name. Pacific Sotheby's. Over 3,000 views in eight days. Bananas. Sick pool. Great job. Initial photo. Best photo. Terrific job. That helps. But look, 1.5 plus million. And that is one of the top 10 view properties. Are you as surprised as I am? that we're seeing so many properties that are this high price point that are in the top 10 for San Diego. I was surprised, very surprised that that is, that was the case. Um, it just kind of blew my mind, but that just shows you the undercurrent what's beneath the transactions. We only see the surface level <clears throat> who transacts. That's all we see. Or we might get numbers. Hey, we had 14 people throw open house. We had 40 people throw open house. We might get those kinds of numbers. But what are people looking at? What are people considering? Remember when you buy real estate, it's not like an impulse purchase 
necessarily. It could be. But for the most part, it's not. It's something that takes a lot of consideration. That consideration period could be weeks, could be months, could be years for people. So people right now who are considering are looking at very nice homes. Now, someone might be like, hey, just because somebody looks at a home online doesn't mean they can afford it. True. It's true. But if you are selling yourself on the idea of buying real estate and you're looking at houses you can't afford, at some point, the rubble will meet the road, right? You'll realize like, okay, well, this is what I can afford. This is where I need to start. If I want this pool in the 92129 and I can't afford it today, I've got to start somewhere else. Last one, number 10, 92109. This is the um, Pacific Beach zip. And you got beautiful views on this property. This one, gosh, I think I forgot to favorite the last one. This one's a gorgeous one. Um, it's a little bit dated you know, uh, to some degree, but a lot of stuff over there is look at the views. So sick, but 1.4 million, again, three bed, two bath detached home for just under 1700 square feet. So <clears throat> nothing crazy. I don't look at this 5,200 views. Jennifer Anderson with compass has this listing in five days. I mean, so if you were like super bearish on the market, what would you expect to see here? And I'm finding myself more and more bearish, which makes me makes the conscious me more and more bullish because I know that it takes the last bull standing to go bearish before you're at the bottom of the market. And it very well may be me. So I just feel like it's closer and closer. Um, each day I see these things and everything that I'm looking at, that's totally objective. Like I have nothing to do with this. This is obviously, this is Redfin's information that they're providing. <clears throat> it's clearly real data. There's no real skew here. Um, I was a little bit worried when we were going through them that it might be because I didn't check initially, uh, might be just a bunch of Redfin listings. It was not. I think there was only one or two that were Redfin listings. So very real data here, 1.4 million. So a bunch of these properties are over a million. And the very first one is definitely going over a million, even though it was listed under Woody's listing. Um, the one in the 92110, this Point Loma listing, detached home, million bucks, that thing is going over a million for sure. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to favorite all these and you can get the link too. I'll put it in the description and you can favorite these and you can see what happens with them yourself. I love getting data like this because it is not my data. It is not, there's no headline behind it. It's just literally 10 most popular homes in San Diego. When you're looking for actual news or actual media, actual data, you can tell when it has a bias behind it. You can tell when it has an agenda to it and you can tell when it's just flat, straight data. This is what flat, straight data looks like. There's no bias in this headline. 10 most popular homes in San Diego. That's it. Um, this is updated today. They are currently, and then it just gives you a bunch of facts. 1,896 homes for sale in San Diego. Of all the homes for sale, 10% have 3,000 uh, plus views by potential homeowners in San Diego. You can expect a home in San Diego to get 654 views per day. Here's a list of the most popular homes for sale in the San Diego market. Just simple, right? There's no agenda there. It's beautiful. So I <coughs> wanted to share that with you. Um, and I'll put the link up, of course. Now let's take a look here quickly at market data inventory. All right. This was the bear's big thing, right? Inventory was going to crush the market. We we're going to see all kinds of homes come on for sale. Sellers were going to have to sell. They're going to be forced to sell because they lost their jobs. How's that going? I'm just being real. Nothing wrong with being a bear. Nothing wrong with having a thesis. Nothing wrong with having a theory. Nothing wrong with any of that. But how's that going? Is the market down a little bit? Yep. Sure is. Isn't that good for people who want to buy? I think it is. I think prices maybe got a little too high. A pullback? Good for buyers. The mania, crazy shit we had going on? Not good for buyers. This is inventory right here. And what's great about Altos is we get three years worth of data um, on these charts. So it just kind of automatically says, hey, zoom out, dude. Like, check out the last three years. Well, you can see with where inventory levels are now, the inventory levels had did go up, right? We see we've seen inventory levels go up, 
And then now we're starting to see drastic decline. And this is seasonal as well, right? Like we, we know that towards the last quarter of the year, inventory declines. It makes sense. People are pulling their homes off the market as they approach the holidays. Okay, we guess we're going to do one more holiday season here. Take it off the market. Some of those homes will come back on uh, next year. Some of them won't, you know, but this is normal. We're used to this. And so there is, there was an uptick in inventory seemed to be to me that seemed to be sellers who were just trying to get the last, like, Oh man, we should have listed the home three months ago. Oh, let's just throw it on now. So we can get it still. Nope. Okay. We're coming off. It was not a panic. There, there is no like huge foreclosure role. Are there short sales out there? There are few and far between. There is no crash happening. Doesn't mean one couldn't happen. <clears throat> Anything's possible, but there is no crash happening. There's a small correction happening. It's a dream for buyers. Unfortunately, many of them do not see it and they will regret it. Many of them, many of them will. They will look back and go, damn it. I had my chance. It was right in front of me. I could see it was so obvious. Everything's obvious in the rear view mirror. It's hard to make the right decisions in the midst. And that's what I'm trying to do is just provide some information here for that. So inventory declining. Look at where we are now. If we go back, when was the last time we were at these levels? Last time we were these levels was early January 2020, <clears throat> which is almost three years ago. Before the pandemic, we were at the same inventory level that we are right now. Just a couple months before the pandemic began, that's where we were. At that time, remember, everyone was talking about how low inventory was. So don't get like seasonal bias is my point at that time. And, and, and really for a year or two, like at least a year and a half prior to that, say everyone was saying the same thing. There's nothing for sale. So don't let people now tell you we're at the same levels that all oh, inventory is out of control. It's not. And if you're a home buyer and you're looking at homes, you know, it's not because you've been looking at the same thing I've been looking at, which is, not as many options as you'd like to see. So just, just be honest with yourself about these things. Don't let them put stuff in your ear that's not really true. Reality is inventory is the same place it was right before the pandemic where everyone said it was insanely low. It got even worse during the pandemic, which also makes sense. People didn't want people going through their homes with this unknown virus running around. Now we're past that. Things have normalized a little bit. There was definitely some, probably some pent up sellers from that, but those sellers were happy. They were like, cool. Price has been going up the whole time. I've been forced to not sell my house. I'm cool. <laughs> and so we got a few extra homes come on the market. When things started to soften a little bit, a lot of those came back off. Now you're seeing the seasonal decline take place. No crash guys. Sorry. I'm sorry. I know a lot of you wanted to crash because you want to be right. I know a lot of you want to crash because you want to buy real estate cheap. I understand both. I do. It's just not, it's not taking place. Um, let's take a look here. Okay. Where are we at here? By the way, we're live on all kinds of platforms. Say what's up. Uh, look at this. I got I get a sun spot in my face. That's great. Um, say what's up. Give me a shout out. Show me you're listening. Show me you care about this stuff. Ask me a question, whatever. It's all good. <clears throat> I know the comments don't always work on this thing. So if you're commenting, it's not coming through. It is what it is. Uh, all right, let's take a look here at this. So Fed's Mester. So um, Cleveland Federal Reserve President Loretta Mester said Wednesday she sees benchmark interest rates rising above 4% by early next year. So she's expecting multiple bigger hikes. She anticipates rate increases to slow economic growth, which she sees running well below 2%. So <clears throat> she's kind of bearish here. And she's saying, we're going to raise rates a couple more times in a big way, get them up to 4%, and we're not going to cut anything next year. I wouldn't be surprised if this is what happens, assuming that there's no catastrophe that they need to save us from, because that's what they really want to do. They want to save us from a catastrophe. They want a catastrophe so that they can come and save the day. They come in and cut rates and print money and do all that stuff because that's how, what makes them feel useful. All right. Imagine if you were an ax that just stayed in the tool chest. You know, it, that's what they are. But they're a walking, breathing ax that wants to be used. So they're chopping wood. That's what they want to do. Right now, it's kind of like the opposite, right? They're planting trees because 
the Fed has to do something at all times, pretty much. It's very rare that they're quiet for long periods of time. This is always true if you're moving something around. Like imagine if you were trying to move like a golf ball around on a linoleum floor and keep it in a certain range. Well, if you just left it there, maybe it would roll around a little bit, but it would be natural. It would go where it's supposed to go. Um, but instead, they're like patting it around like a cat. And so you have to constantly try to fix it and push it back in the right direction. What a weird analogy. No idea where that came from. But the reality is they're always having to do something. So they're saying there are no cuts at least through 2023. I would be very shocked if the Fed didn't do something next year. Very shocked. Also, don't think we'll see 4%. I bet money on that. We won't see 4%. It's not going to be necessary to do that much damage. And I think they will see prior to making those last couple cuts that it is damaging the economy. And I think there will be enough political pressure to keep that from happening. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I just want to tell you, hey, this this is not great news, especially for stocks. <clears throat> Real estate could be really insulated from this, but stocks, ooh, no, no, no. Not the case. Not the case. All right, so we're going to take a look at that next. Let's see. I got to pull it up on this screen over here and then transfer it to this screen over here. Let's see. Does that work? does okay cool there we go okay this is dow jones so i told you and this is not an i told you so thing this is not i am not excited at all about this victory lap but i did call it middle finger candle what does that do sends things lower what do we have this is a weekly buy by the way on the dow jones industrial we got murdered last week that was just a slaughter so far this week, same, same. <clears throat> what were my call call outs? Does anybody remember? I'll draw the lines for you here so you can see. Right here, the golden pocket. Somewhere between, so I was saying, hey, you know, very likely to see somewhere between 31.4 and 31.3. This could be the place where we finally get some support. Um, you know, that little pocket right there, we're very close to that. It's heading towards that as we speak. I'll probably do a little better job of zooming this in for you. It's we're, we're headed there. We're very close to there. I think tomorrow we are going to enter into the golden pocket. Hopefully we see a little bounce off of it. Um, we should. It'd be nice if we could close the week above this. So come down in, touch it, maybe even blow through it a little bit, then come back up. See, see that that pocket work for us. See buyers come in and be interested in this thing. It, th this area, there's tons of confluence with these other candles. I really think we're going to get support here. So I think the worst of the stock market itself, well, may not be over with just yet. I ha I'm optimistic that we're nearing support. We're getting close to support here. And so hopefully <clears throat> this will be the place where we turn around. That golden pocket usually works out very well uh, for reversals. Um, and so, you know. I, I technically a continuation of this uptrend that we had this bear horn here that we have going on that thing is 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 not good and that will still cause problems potentially um it is very macro this is a weekly chart so you know the worst may not be over with but we could at least get a bounce off of this maybe revisit this upper trend line um that could be in the works here over the course of the next couple of weeks so the worst may not be over yet here for stocks but it could be close and i the thing that i guarantee you though is that we're very likely very very likely to revisit that 31 400 to 31 300 range and that looks like that's going to happen probably tomorrow so those there's victory laps that i enjoy taking there's victory laps i don't enjoy taking this is the one the ones i don't enjoy i wish i had monetized this better um i did make a little bit off this decline but not much and so uh my bad for not seeing the obvious trade here so it is what it is that said i do see right now a lot of buyers coming out of the woodwork so top of funnel for buyers right now has actually been really really strong and the last thing we'll do is just kind of look at a couple of things here oh price per square foot that was what i want to show you this is always my metric for <clears throat> how is the market doing how's the market doing is the market doing well 
um, when the market is doing really well, so let's call it strong seller's market, you see that the seven day average is trending above the 90 day average. So the shorter term average will bounce off of the longer term average. The rollover that we see here in the longer term average and the shorter term average, the seven day average, they're dipping beneath. Now they're pretty much right on top of one another. So the seven day average is 673 a foot, the 90 day average is 682 a foot. So they've, they're starting to converge again. And this is what I'm, when I look at this stuff and I tell you like <clears throat> everything I see pretty much, except for the interest rate chart, which sucks right now, everything I see signals like the worst probably in the rear view mirror, probably like as far as the demand being lower, sellers having to give up everything, that stuff just doesn't seem like it has much shelf life left. Everything here is showing me like correction might be behind us, getting back to a more, um, a more excited buyer's market. Meanwhile, we still have a lot of buyers who are scared of the market. But the ones who are in there, I had three offers this week and I thought we would have a shot at, didn't get any of them. None. All multiple offers. Now that's not, that's just three situations. That's not the whole market. I get that. But it's a reality that we are living in. Okay. Let's see. A couple things here. Let me pop this up. Quick like. Couple things. Number one, <clears throat> desperation has set in for a lot of lenders out there. It's getting crazy, guys. People are lying, stealing, cheating. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. This is why I don't like to participate in any of that crap. We offer no fees, charge no fees, wholesale rates, minimum comp. We provide a good deal. In this business, you can you can pay yourself really, really, you can pay yourself great money <clears throat> and just have an okay deal. You can pay yourself good money and give a good deal. And that's what we do. So we make it very, very easy for you to get a great deal on your home loan. If you have gotten a quote already, you've already been pre-approved, it's really easy. We don't need to pull your credit. I can check it for you. Make sure that you're getting a good deal. Let's make sure that you are getting a good deal. If you are, then great. If you aren't, then we will hook you up. But let's make sure of it. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm getting this rate. What are your costs? Like, what do you mean costs? I don't know. I haven't all the time. Shoot me a call, text, email. I will take care of you. We do not need to pull your credit to give you a quote and see what kind of deal you should be getting. I wish I lend in all 50 states, but people reach out to me from Indiana and you know all sorts of states that we don't lend in. That's okay. I can connect you with someone who's in your state. Okay, West Virginia. I got one from West Virginia today. I'm still waiting to hear back from somebody who's um, licensed in West West Virginia. So if you're an LO licensed West Virginia, give me a shout. <laughs> Trying to hook them up <clears throat> um, and do my due diligence. That's one state I just just hadn't come up yet, you know. But uh, if you are in another state, I will try to find you someone who's reputable through my coaching group, and make sure that we get you taken care of. Okay. All right. We're gonna call it a day. I'm gonna call it a day. I've done everything I need to do today. I've informed you. I've made all my calls. Done all my follow ups. We are now ready. I'm ready to go. Tell my kids to stop, stop screaming. <laughs> Y'all have a great evening. I'll be here if you need me. Do not need to pay too much for a home loan. Let us hook you up. Make sure you're getting hooked up. One of the two. Have a great night, guys.